basically you have to remove the intake manifold and everything that's on the intake manifold has to come off like this tube will go across this tube will go across and they all cross over another bolt that goes down into the intake so you've got a lot of little things that have to come off to get to it um, this line holds crosses that bolt that line crosses that bolt that line crosses here um, everything sits on top of it so it's just kind of a process to go through and and Okay, there's ten bolts, but there's seven lines that cross the ten bolts. So you've got to you've got to go back and find every line that crosses everything, everything that's in the way, to get the intake up. And then once you get the intake up, you get into the valley, and you've got your four oxygen sensors or your four NOx sensors. And if you disconnect the NOx sensors, you're probably going to have trouble with the wiring harnesses on them. So what we did is we removed the bolts out of the four sensors, so we leave the wires connected, and we pull the sensors out as a complete unit, so we can get to the bolts on the on the valley. Okay. Then you pull the valley out. And then all that crust is built up in there, and you have to take a shot back, and you have to break it loose and suck it out before you pull the cover so you don't put all that crap into the engine. And then after you get it out, you clean it all out again. Then you suck out all the remaining antifreeze and everything in there. You get everything cleaned up, clean up the intake, clean up the, the block, re-silicone everything, and, and, and start the reassembly process. Okay. There's wire harnesses that run across the back of the intake that are clipped in. They're very hard to get the clips loose. You can get the intake loose, but you can't get it out. you got to work back there and release the clip, release the clip. Um, it's not hard, it's just time consuming because there's every, every, you know, normally you're 10 bolts and you pull it off. Well, this line crosses here, this line crosses here. It's just, it's just the layers and layers and layers of getting to everything. Um, the parts, um, like I say, the PVC valve I replaced because we were in there. PVC hose, we didn't replace because we couldn't get it. The heater hoses, we replaced both of those. Um, the PVC plastic, I would have replaced, but it's on back order. We're not going to leave a car down for four or five weeks waiting for one piece of plastic, you know. But if I was if I was to know that you're going to do it, I would order all the hoses and all the plastics and all the O-rings that go in the valley. Um, the actual gasket is just silicone, and then you have the gasket on the intake. So there's not a lot of parts to it, just a lot of time. Gotcha. Um, these things, we had a conversation. I didn't even know that this was a thing with Toyotas. I mean, you, everybody talks about how Toyota slash Lexus, you know, these things are very reliable and, and almost indestructible. I mean, have you heard of this before? This is the first one that I've seen. Um, the difference between the Toyota and the GM, if a GM had done this, they'd be a plastic gasket in it, and then when it failed, it would be catastrophic. The Toyota uses silicone and it's a minor seat and it's not a big deal. Okay. But GM uses, GM and Ford both use plastic gaskets with, with silicone rings in them, rubber rings in them. And when they when the plastic cracks, then you end up with a gap this big instead of a gap fingernail class size. So I think that the Lexus, Lexus Toyota is better in that aspect because you're not gonna have the catastrophic failure. You have a seat that you can keep up with. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. which is what was happening with this thing. Right. It was kind of sneaky because it was such a slow leak that by the time it would hit the ground, apparently, it was um, evaporating. Right, because it, 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 the, the valley fills up and then it runs over the top of the transmission and you have your two exhaust pipes there. So it's in a 1200 degree area, so it evaporates. There was, that's why there was so much of that crud buildup is that's the residue out of the coolant after it evaporates. That's why there was so much of that buildup in the pictures that I sent you of the of the calcium, lime, whatever out of the water buildup in it. Um, uh, any, any, do you think that your average DIY guy should tackle something like this? They'd have to be pretty good to be able to tackle it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff. And the problem with it is, is if you pry on the wrong thing, you break a three or $400 part. And if you get angry at it or you get in a hurry at it, um, you can cost yourself more money in real quick. Gotcha. Anything else uh, you think? Uh, well, once, like you said, if you know that you have this, probably give yourself enough time, identify those parts, order them because a lot of them are in back order, like right. you said. And then uh, that's, I guess, once you open it up, it's it's worth taking care of some other items in there. Yeah, I mean, if you get in there and, the, and somebody's already been in there, then you're probably going to need the wire harnesses for the knock sensors and that issue at the same time. We had no coach for any of that, so we didn't worry about it, but we didn't unplug them. Okay. Because everything, you can imagine being in plastic and being down there for 10 years in the center of an engine that's running 300 degrees all the time. It's hot. Yeah. And everything breaks. 
um, Toyota is terrible on their connectors anyway wanting to break. But th that's the same thing here. I mean, this connector right here, if you don't aren't careful when you release it, and you have to buy that connector, that connector is probably seventy five dollars. So you have to take a pick, and you have to go in here, and you have to lift it up real carefully to get everything off. And every one of them is that way to keep from breaking stuff. That's where the DIYer would have problems if they get impatient. So there's a high high risk potential for making it worse. Right. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you so much, Greg. No problem. How long have you been in business over here? Uh, 38, 39 years. Nice. Yeah. So this is your first, your first Valley Plate League. <laughs> yeah, I did some commercials for Medcare and two-way radios years ago, and that was about it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> awesome.